In the last month since the conflict began, you might have heard the term NATO. But what exactly is NATO? And what does it have to do with what's happening in Ukraine? NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 countries and was established in 1949. Every stage of um, NATO expansion has been encouraged by Russia's aggression. The purpose of NATO is to safeguard its allies' freedom and security by political and military means. What this means is each member of NATO has agreed to support other members if their country or territory comes under attack. If one country that is a part of the agreement gets attacked, NATO sees this as an attack on all NATO countries. With NATO countries and other allies putting sanctions on Russia, you must be thinking that Ukraine is part of NATO. However, it's a bit more complicated than that. NATO and Ukraine have had relations dating back to 1992, even applying to join NATO in 2008. However, being unsuccessful due to a number of reasons. For a nation to join NATO, they must meet several political, social and military criteria, as well as get a unanimous consent from all current NATO members. Ukraine has a history of economic and political corruption, which doesn't align with NATO's membership criteria. Another factor is that Ukraine's military practices aren't up to the standard that NATO requires for membership. NATO also doesn't allow countries with ongoing territorial disputes to join the alliance. Since the mid-1990s has been Russian aggression. 1994, under President Yeltsin, Russia devastated Chechnya. Um, the capital of Chechnya was a significant European city. It was effectively leveled to the ground in scenes that are um, very reminiscent of what we've seen more recently in Mariupol. NATO's actions are defensive, designed not to provoke a conflict, but to prevent a conflict. The Alliance has a responsibility to ensure this war does not escalate and spread beyond Ukraine, which would be even more devastating. In the aftermath of the annexation of Crimea, in 2014 and um, Russia's instigation of a, a proxy war in southeast Ukraine. Those events were a graphic demonstration um, for countries on the periphery of Russia that um, they are in danger, that this regime is unpredictable. If NATO becomes directly involved with this conflict, this could lead to a full-fledged war in Europe involving many more countries and causing more suffering. However, there is a very serious risk of an uh, escalation if Russia is clearly losing the war, and particularly if that is combined with problems for Putin at home. Because of this, NATO and its allies have placed restrictive measures on Russia. Some of these restrictions are in the form of sanctions designed to have a heavy impact on Russia's political and economic climate for many years. NATO is helping to coordinate Ukraine's request for assistance and is supporting allies in the delivery of humanitarian and non-lethal aid. Individual NATO member countries are sending weapons, ammunition, medical supplies and other vital military equipment to Ukraine. They are also providing millions of euros of financial assistance to Ukraine. Many NATO countries and allies are also offering humanitarian aid to civilians by opening their borders to Ukrainian refugees with some countries also waiving visa application processes.